from being imposed uh, on all the state citizens and causing them to have to be uh, taxed extra. That, you know what, that's, that's an internal battle. That's, that's, uh, that's checks and balances. Uh, we have a problem in this country at the federal level and the state level where the judiciary judges overreach and legislate from the bench. No doubt about it. You and I probably agree frankly on every single thing they've done. The job then is of the legislative branch to fight that. We just, Will you be fighting it? Absolutely. It's a problem. Absolutely. And keep throwing legislation, keep throwing legislation at the judiciary. Question, yes, sir. My brother, Aniac, uh, another veteran. Uh, thank thanks. you for your service. Um, in states, there's about 17,000 veterans in Illinois that are unemployed. In your district, in which I told them to speed way back in June, you have somewhere between 9 to 10 percent of the vets that are unemployed in the state of Illinois in your district. Two parts. One is that Department of Labor funds IDES to take care of writing checks, and they also provide the other programs to help people get jobs. Right now, the state of Illinois is concentrating on writing the checks and not servicing the employers as far as helping them hire people. So, what first part of the question is, what are you going to do to make the DOL hold the states accountable with the grant money they provide to start doing the programs that they're getting money from the federal government for? And the second part is that, let me answer that real quickly. Hold the money until they do it. Second question. The okay, second one is that in the veteran community, I know that there's 22 organizations in McHenry County, there's probably somewhere between 30 and 40 in Lake County, and I don't know how many is down with the way they got the district down in the southern neck of the woods. But the only time that uh, veterans seem to be important to any politician seem to be around election time. Who do you have on your staff that veterans can go to to talk about veterans' employment rights as far as VA? regular fee, social security, things of that sort. So when you start on January 5th, you can start getting these fixed for those vets that need the assistance. You have your business card with you? Oh, of course. <laughs> Actually, point of fact, I probably have two of those cards. Um, I want to specifically hire a veterans outreach person on my district staff. Uh, there are a number of other areas where I want to have the outreach person hired specifically to work with and build coalitions around specific groups, veterans being one of them. And I'd love to get your thoughts on, we have, I mean, we have, we, have, we will be spending on next month and a half to two months hiring our entire staff. So we're not, we're not at all there yet. But you and I know each other. I'd love to pick your brain about the best way to do that. Thank you. Is it an easy one? It's really easy. Go. No. <laughs> I also want to thank you for running for office to have a lady up there and be here. Um, but can you just mention you, uh, you know, you're, you're against growing government, and I just want you to confirm that, that anything that comes up to rest and has to do with national security or health of the nation, that you're not going to vote for anything to increase the size of government or the budget. Yeah, important that you nail me down on anything I say. So let me say it again. Uh, my name is Joe Walsh. I was born in Barrington, Illinois. I come from a big old Irish Catholic family of nine kids. And I will never vote for anything that either increases the size of the federal government or can't be justified by something I find in the Constitution. If I can say it more clearly than that, I'll say it. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, President Obama says or has indicated that he, that he wants to uh, bypass Congress by uh, government news agencies and czars. Oh, you're kidding me. And yeah, how do you think Congress to plan on dealing with this? And again, folks, this was, there's so, we all live such busy lives. Uh, the people that write our laws don't understand how to what they pass. But Dr. Dan's right. Obamacare consumed a lot of our attention, but that piece of financial regulation reform they passed basically gave the president and the executive branch the power to bail anybody out in the future they want to bail out. Now, again, you, you and I may fight and disagree on, on whether uh, 
certain banks are too big to fail. But prior to the legislation, Congress at least had to approve it. Now Congress doesn't even have that power. Uh, way too much power. I mean, you'd know better than I. The number of czars our president has appointed is through the roof, right? You're going to see, it's going to get tested on Republicans, but you're going to see a lot of investigations the next year by Congress. Well, this is important, though. On that very issue, you're going to see investigations by Congress specifically on how Obamacare was passed. Republicans had better be, again, real careful that we do this and educate the American people as to why we're doing it. Educate the American people as to why it's so unconstitutional that he's been able to appoint so many jobs. Appoint, appoint so many people that are unelectable to us. It's going to be a test, folks, and you guys who are with us are going to have to be there with us. Because the media is just waiting to rip once again, these big bad Republicans, they're going to do what they did 16 years ago. we got to do it with smiles on our faces, but we got to talk to the American people. Other questions? All the way in the back. Mr. Zip. How are you doing, Joe? Uh, I've got a question for oh. Bob. One of the things that I've noticed, we see something kind of different here, and probably you might have a lot of talks when about this. I think the youth of today is kind of missing dreams. We you know, President Obama has literally taken us out of the Man Space Program. He's spent all that money on domestic programs, no matter how much we cut, 80% of his entitlements. What one thing would you like to do in that two, first two years to give dreams back to the community, back to the Russia? It's a great question. I had better be thinking on my feet. <laughs> um, look, it, it, it's, a, it's a great question, and if this is a kind of a weasley answer, I apologize. And I think I'll figure out what I want to say. I got elected in part because I was very angry, and I'm not an angry guy, but I'm very angry at what's going on in the country. I really believe, in my heart and in my head, respectfully, we're at war right now. There is a mindset in charge that wants to go government and make us all dependent upon government. It's a war. And if we Republicans, we got to go to Washington and fight against this war. So I'm afraid to say, to your question, that these first couple of years, uh, there's not going to be a lot of sunny stuff that we're proposing. There's not going to be a lot of reaching across the aisle. Um, there's going to be a lot of, come here, President, you got to come over to where we're standing now. There's going to be a lot of this thing called the lobby here. We're against. We're going to be against the lobby. Because we're trying to fight the fight for future generations. And at the beginning of the war, you've heard me say this, the beginning of the war is not the time to reach across and see how the other side's doing. Not now. I'm only staying there six years, so I'll probably miss the good stuff. But I believe in freedom. Uh, if I could do one thing in the next six years, is I want to educate young people and make freedom cool. This whole notion of freedom. The young people bought into Obama because he was different. They didn't listen to what he said. My gosh, we he, he's African American, he's articulate, he's a hell of a speaker, he doesn't look like what we're used to vote for. Young people got caught up in that. Nothing against John McCain, but John McCain looked like what we're used to vote for. Republicans need to present that. But Republicans need to make what we're saying matter. I don't care if you like the way the law looks. I want to talk about freedom. I want, I want young people to understand that unless we do something differently, they and their kids are going to be up against it. I want to educate young people in the next six years. I'm a teacher by trade. If we can't get them on our side with the fact that if we don't stop what's going on right now, I pity the world. Their kids are being involved in. Hold that question. Question. Um, I'm kind of an angry moderate. And uh, we've got a lot of people on the far left, oh, thank you. and a lot of people on the far right. And we've got a war going on. Do you think this is going to do us any good or our country? Yeah, yeah.